Hey everybody. I don't know who's awake at this time, but the Holy Spirit definitely is. And so here we are doing a video. And uh, may the joy of the Lord be our strength. So if you're awake and happen to be joining me in this time for fellowship, I just want to thank you for your time. I appreciate your fellowship with me and with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's time to arise and uh, seek the Lord <laughs> day and night, right? Because the night is coming when no man can work. So let us work while it is day. So as the Lord leads, we're just going to go forth as he is leading the way. And uh, this is his video, so I'm just going to let him have his way. And like I said, let the supernatural joy of the Lord be our strength this night. I don't know what any of you are going through, but there's definitely been a shift taking place. And I definitely want to offer the Lord um, my first fruits with these videos of the beginning of the year. This year 2018, up and coming, we're already started. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be blessed. So I just pray for all of you to come into agreement with God's word, that his promises shall never come back void and shall always stand. Amen. And uh, the enemy definitely didn't want this video to happen tonight, but as the spirit strength uh, continues us on this walk in a narrow way, we're going to go forth and we're going to possess the land that the God has, our God, <laughs> the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, uh, Abraham, and Jacob, the land that he's promised to us, we're going to go forth and we're going to possess it in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's going to be a good year. So let us just continue striving together for the spreading forth of the word of God and this glorious gospel, this good news. I don't know who wouldn't want to hear good news, but uh, it's time for the good news to uh, find those with an ear to hear and uh, with an eye to see and a heart to be open to the things of God and a mind to receive and understand the things of God. It's time to just allow ourselves to be poured out as a drink offering um, as, and let all that we do in word and indeed let us do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He will give us the desires of our heart and those desires of our heart are his desires and he's taking out the old person, the old desires right now. He's purging out every spiritual toxin that's been trying to cloud our heart with insecurity, cloud our heart with doubt, cloud our heart with unbelief. Uh, cloud our heart with confusion. We come against it right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. We sever every demonic hindrance of the enemy. And I pray uh, that you all come into agreement with this word. Uh, because I believe it is of the Lord. And I believe it is now high time to awake and arise out of slumber. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I'm glad to see that there's a few other souls up at this hour of the night, but it's in that midnight hour. There's a, a special feeling, um, there's a special moment that I seem to find myself having, a special presence when I'm in strong relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and in my prayer closet with Him, just praying and abiding in his presence in these hours of the night there's just something about it i know some people are nocturnal others are not but i'm definitely nocturnal so it's awesome to see that there's some other people some other souls out there in these hours of the night uh seeking uh, the word of god seeking god's presence seeking more of him and there's always more that he has for us to the capacity that we are able to be filled up and even overflow so let us just overflow out of our belly shall flow a river of living water i know i say a lot of the same scriptures over and over but they're just some of my favorite it's the truth and god's word is the truth and jesus christ is the truth and i love it all I love the entire word, and I pray for a deeper understanding this year for us all, including myself, and more revelation of God's word, and 
him um, sowing into us the seed of his word so deeply rooted and in the proper season we shall bear fruit and uh, corrupt fruit cannot come out of a a good tree and vice versa good fruit will not come out of a corrupt tree so I just pray that we get solidly planted upon the solid foundation the rock which is Jesus Christ an anchor of our soul in which we find rest in that place he will lead us beside still waters and in due season we shall grow and we shall bear fruit in its proper season everything uh, has a season under heaven and uh, it's not for us to know all the dates and times, but the seasons. The season is approaching right now. That's uh, getting closer and closer to the day of the Lord. So well, there is an urgency to get these videos out. There is an urgency to get closer to God more than ever before. There is an urgency to do all that He's called us to do. But it's all going to still fit into that proper timing and sometimes it's hard to not get ahead of ourselves because sometimes he shows us glimpses of the future and we might think that it's tomorrow but it might be two years away it may be it may be five years off it may be ten years away even but we think it's tomorrow sometimes because our mentality is hard to grip around eternity's timing and it's just hard to grasp the things of the spirit while we're here on earth so even though there is an urgency I'm trying my best to just have patience myself to wait on God for the things that he's revealed because no eye has seen it no ear has heard neither has entered into the heart of man the, the things that God has prepared and he has plans to give us a hope he has plans to give us a future not plans to harm us so every weapon that we perceive as being formed against us that seems like it's on the winning side it's not the truth because the truth declares that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and that we are on the winning side and to remain on the winning side which we already are it's very important that we know who we are in Christ that God is who he says he is we are who he says we are and he will do what he said he will do in the proper time and those three things always seem to be attacked they always seem to be attacked because if the enemy can steal one of those things from us we begin to become unsteady and sliding back the other way into the falsehood of the father of lies the prince of the power of the air so we just strip that power amen hallelujah thank you Jay thank you Prince thank you uh, and you D I hope I'm pronouncing your name right I am well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Pleased to have you guys here with me, actually. It keeps me motivated. You guys keep me motivated. And uh, it's always to, it's a good thing to be kept on our toes, always uh, in the next, the next thing. <laughs> always on to the next move. And Christ always has another page of our life all ready to go before we even live it and it's amazing how we are just a living epistle a living letter and our life is just being unfolded step by step by step so to just follow with the step of the rhythm of the flow of heaven it is due season it is just that time and I'm here to motivate I'm here to encourage so what do you think is attacking the body of Christ uh, the spirit of depression the opposite of who we really are and what we're called to do all the opposite of the truths of who we are and who God is and what God's capable of which is he's the God of the impossible he can do all things and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So what do you think is attacking the body of Christ? It's the complete opposite of whatever the call on our lives is. It's the complete opposite of who we really are in Christ. It's the complete opposite of who God really is and who He is in us. And it's just the complete opposite of everything that's 
truth. So it is time to speak forth the truth of God's word. But it's hard to speak something forth that you're not completely persuaded in. So we need to have a solid foundation and know what we believe, why we believe it, and the God that we serve. We need to have a strong communion and fellowship and time with Him in a deep, deep place. In a deep, deep place He's going to take us this year. I believe He's really taking us to a deeper place in Him because He has wonderful things in store and we're only able to receive them to the capacity that we've offered ourselves up in, in surrender and just asking Him to fill us up fill us up and fill us up until we overflow and He will He is faithful who promised so we're going to get into a little bit of scripture and uh, beforehand I think it's good to say a prayer so please feel free to join me and I welcome you I welcome you in the name of the Lord thank you Father for these people joining this video we praise you, Lord. We honor your holy name. I pray that this seed falls on good ground, that you give everyone under the sound of your voice ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart to feel and retain, and a mind to receive the things that you have in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. Strengthen us, Lord, in spirit. Strengthen us, Lord, in truth, and we come against all enemy attack right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we purify this atmosphere by the Spirit of the living God. The blood of Jesus Christ is against all confusion spirits, all deception spirits, every spirit of doubt, unbelief, fear, anxiety, worry, depression, and instability and double-mindedness. We just completely take authority over you. Every single spirit in opposition to the truth of God's word. We bind you, we cast you out, and we banish you back to hell in which you came. And we command that you stay put there. And we just command right now that every evil entity fighting us against our destiny, that you bow your knee to the name of Jesus Christ, in which every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, open us up, Lord, to your truth. Open us up, Father, to complete surrender. Open us up to your presence like never before, Father. Take us into deeper territory, deeper waters, and just strengthen us by the Spirit of the living God. Let us be uh, built up into a holy spiritual house as the temple of God, the Holy Spirit indwelling within us, God in us, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of Christ, hope of glory, keep motivating us, Lord. And we just purge every spiritual toxin and every uh, distractive force set up against our purpose by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, make us new. In Jesus' name, we invite you into our atmosphere. We declare an atmosphere for breakthrough right now in the realm of the Spirit on earth as it is in heaven. And we declare an atmosphere for healings. We declare an atmosphere for miracles. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, we come against every spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus Christ, we come against any other spirit and all demonic forces of evil at work against our salvation, against our Revelation of who we are in you, our identity. In Jesus' mighty name, we break the power of darkness over our lives and over the lives of our family members, over our ministry, over our schooling, over our workplace. In Jesus' mighty name, let the work of our hands be blessed. And we thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, name above all names, worthy of all praise, and our heart will sing no other name. Have your way. We call forth fire and power of the Holy Ghost right now to burn and refine everything that's not sent by Father God. Right now, in Jesus' name, have your way, Lord. Use us for your glory and completion, O oh God. We thank you for choosing us, that we did not choose you, but you've already chosen us and predestined us before the beginning of time, before the foundations of the world. 
were even created. And you had us on your mind on that cross. And ha allow us, Father, to have a stronger revelation of what was really done on the cross at Calvary. That it is finished, and we come by the way of the cross, and we step into your plan for our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, let it be so. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. He is merciful. And I'm just here to proclaim His goodness on the land and speak forth the truth, which is that God loves us so much that He gave His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. So let it be so. And according to Genesis 127, so God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. So God created mankind in his own image. So what would the enemy like to do more than wreck the image? Because it makes him upset, uh, everything that uh, gives glory to God. The enemy wants to rob, the enemy wants to steal, the enemy wants to destroy, and we are made in the image of God. So the enemy is always trying to destroy uh, image, identity. It's a very important factor, I believe, in our Christian walk. According to 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. Now if the ministry that brought death, which was engraved in letters on stone, came with glory, so that the Israelites could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of its glory. Transitory, though it was, will not the ministry of the Spirit be even more glorious? If the ministry that brought condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the ministry that brings righteousness? For what was glorious has no glory, now in comparison with the surpassing glory. And if what was transitory came with glory, how much greater is the glory of that which lasts? Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. But their minds were made dull. For to this day the same veil remains when the Old Covenant is read, it has not been removed, because only in Christ it is taken away. Even to this day when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts, but whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. So let's take this line upon line. Let's take this precept upon precept and my personal interpretation right here. This is very deep. This is really deep. Whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So directly after the veil being taken away, it mentions the Lord being the Spirit and that there's freedom. There's freedom when the veil is taken away from our eyes and we can begin to see we are who He says we are. He really did what He said He was going to do. It's already finished, and we claim it, and we live life victoriously. And we start seeing things that, for the way that it really is. He's taking off that veil of deception that was over our eyes. And we're walking in the light as He is in the light. And when the light's off, you just simply can't see. But when the light of Christ is turned on in our lives, everything becomes clear that was once cloudy. Everything that was once darkness comes to the light. Every impurity, every imperfection... But He's refining us into fine gold through it all. And it's a blessing. It's a blessing to know Him. It's a blessing to be His child. It's a blessing to know that He loves us so much. It's a blessing to just be able to abide in His presence. It's a, it's a wonderful blessing to just know the name of Jesus. You know, there's some countries 
where it's banned to speak that name. And there's some countries where they have not even heard that name. But how will they hear unless a preacher be sent? It's time. Jesus shall not return until his word spreads forth unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And all of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. And it's time to come forth boldly as sons and daughters proclaiming the goodness of the Lord, which we shall see in the land of the living. And it is just due season. It is due time to arise. But in order for these things to take place, I believe it's important for us to come into our full identity. And I just command right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the authority of the Word of God, by the power in the name of Jesus for our identities to come forth now in Jesus name just believe and receive it's it's coming it's coming he's unfolding more and more according to Matthew 4:11 then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights afterward he was hungry now when the tempter came to him he said if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Man shall not Sorry that. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. So two times the devil questioned Jesus, If you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, then do this. Show me. And Jesus denied the temptation he overcame the temptation, in other words. So then the next thing the enemy tried to do was to get Jesus to fall down and worship Satan and offer him the world and the world's glory. So identity is tied into worship. We're all worshiping something whether we know it or not. And we're all either taking glory in or giving glory. We're either taking glory to ourselves or we're giving glory to the Father in the original way we were intended to, which is what we will do when we know our true identity. It's all connected with overcoming temptation. It's very important for us to know who we are in Christ. And the only way to know that is to know Christ. And the closer we get to Jesus Christ, the closer we get to who we really are because His Word is as a mirror. And the more we read it, we see who we really are in Him. And the only way for that is to have His Word deeply rooted within us and to be planted solidly upon the soil of our hearts, receiving that Word and it being watered by the washing of the water of the Word that in due season we shall bear fruit but before all those things, it's knowing God. And in that process, we begin to know who we really are because this world has lied to us. The glory of this world is nothing compared to the glory that we shall receive at the end of our faith. There's nothing worth losing our soul and gaining the whole world. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose his own soul? And only the man that doesn't know who he is will be willing to give that up of what he could have had. And it's, it's a pearl of great price. Salvation is of the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. And the battle 
belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we got to give it to Him. Instead of trying to fight all of our battles on our own, we got to give it to Him. And then we begin to see He is who He says He is. He can do what He says He can do. He shall do it. He shall do a new thing. He shall take out our stony heart and give us a heart of flesh. And we shall begin living a life of peace, living a life of joy, living a life of self-control, living a life of patience, living a life full of the fruits of the Spirit. And that's who we really are. As we are renewed in the spirit of our mind, we begin to see who we really are. And other people are confused because they see the change in us. And it doesn't register with them because who we really were, in other words, who we were is not who we really are. So to the people around us, there is a spirit of confusion that arises within them and springs up because it's confusing to see you doing something different than you used to do. It doesn't make any sense to see you displaying different fruit than they're used to picking off of that tree. Because before it was a corrupt tree, bringing forth corrupt fruit. Now all of a sudden the DNA, DNA of the tree has actually changed and good fruit's coming. And don't expect everybody to give you a round of applause in your walk with Christ. I'm not here to discourage people who just found the Lord. But I'm here to tell the truth of the word that all who live godly in Christ shall be persecuted. So we should be prepared to with a readiness of knowing that we shall endure it. And that if Jesus was mocked and scourged, we shall also be persecuted. And he says, if the world hated me, they shall also hate you. But it's only the God in you. And it's only the, only the God that is in you that can be rejected. And knowing that gives us a boldness. Because a lot of us, suffer from a spirit of insecurity and uh, fear of rejection. But if we know who we are in Christ, that fades away. That people-pleasing attitude begins to crumble as well. We break it by the blood of Jesus Christ. If I should be a pleaser of men, I should not be the servant of Christ. And that boldness causes other people to um, have insecurity rise up in them and they don't know how to take you. So don't take it personal if you're not getting a round of applause. Don't take it personal if you're getting persecuted for righteousness sake. Don't take it personal if people are mocking you and accusing you of being the complete opposite of what you actually are. Accuse you of doing the complete opposite things of what you're actually doing. It's just actually it's um it's a reward for the righteousness which has been given to you by your faith. It's by faith alone. This entire walk. According to Jeremiah 1, 4 through 10, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you, in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will, res will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Let me just turn this down a little bit. All right, so what is this really saying here? The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You know, it's amazing. It really is hard to wrap your mind around. The simplicity, the simplicity is what's hard for us because we are complicated as human beings. So when given simple truths, it's hard for us to break down that complex nature that this world has built upon us and just break everything down 
back to the simplicity of what it really is. And in that simplicity, it's a deep truth. And in that depth, it's simple. But this world has to complicate everything. So everything is really simple. But the babes in Christ desire the sincere milk of the word. But as we begin to grow and grow, we need the meat of the word. And God is going to grow us up. And as he is nourishing us up in his word, our identity comes forth more and more and more. It's unraveling like the layers of an onion are peeling back one by one by one by one by one by one to peel off lie after lie after lie label after discontent after disappointment after hopelessness after all these things that we've went through for however old we are however many years on the earth those layers have to be peeled off down to the innermost part of our being which is our core and once that gets um, remolded reshaped and rearranged we become as lights in this dark world and this world is not always going to know how to respond to that because Christ has gotten a hold of us, set us apart, remolded us, redefined who we thought we were and just created us into being a new creation in Christ and we need to begin to uh, live our lives from a place of a renewed mindset in the simple truth that we are a new creation in Christ, that all things of the past have, have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The old man is, is dead to sin. We are alive to righteousness. We are buried with him in baptism. We are raised with him by the Holy Spirit of the living God. We shall be raised with him on the last day. His spirit, his goodness, and a godly sorrow leads us into repentance. And that's the beginning. And we begin to believe. And then he begins answering our prayers and making himself revealed in our lives. And we begin to see that he is real, that there really is a God out there that hears me and then our faith grows and the more our faith begins to grow and grow and grow, we just begin to grow and we feed and are nourished upon his word and as that happens, his Holy Spirit just breaks forth from the inside out, it's just overflowing, it has to go somewhere, it can't just contain and I don't really believe we're put here just to die and go to heaven but we are put here to bring heaven to touch with earth. Then according to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God. Glorify God with your bodies. And this body, this life is not our own. It's just on a loan given to us and we are, are given this life to proclaim praises to he who has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light as chosen vessels of the king here we are and it's just a joy it's a blessing to be called of him and to many are called but few are chosen and few will take responsibility for that call and say yes lord here i am I am yours. Use me for your glory. For all that I am and all that I was, Lord. Re make me born again into a new creation in Christ. Resurrect this dead spirit, this dead soul that was in me. And breathe the breath of life into me. So I can be used for your glory, Lord. That all things work together for the good of those who love God and live according to his purpose. And we can only live according to his purpose when we love him. But we can only love him when we recognize his love and start to have an understanding of how much he loves us. Because we love just because he first loved us. And when we come into agreement with that full understanding of the truth of his word and knowledge of his love for us, then we can begin to love ourselves and see ourselves as he sees us. And then we begin to live our lives from a different 
level of understanding in a different realm than we were living in before. And that's when a lot of things get stirred up. And don't expect things to be smooth all of the time because there will be warfare because you've discovered something of such great price. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, the rock of ages. Oh, the Lord is just so good. He is just so good to us. There's nothing bad about Him because it's not bad news. It is good news. The gospel is great news. Better than good. But gospel means good news. So let us just receive it and continue striving together for this spreading forth of His Word and just being laborers for the kingdom. For the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. Glory to God. According to Romans 15, 7, accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. So knowing... Christ has accepted us into the Beloved, gives us the ability to bring praise to Him. We're not even able to bring praise to God without knowing that Christ has accepted us. And we must know that Christ has accepted us so that we can begin to receive His forgiveness and let go of the shame, let go of the guilt, let go of the condemnation because our sins are now washed as far as the east is from the west, why are we still holding on to it and listening to the voice of the accuser? Why? We need to recognize and use God's word as a filter. And when we're hearing these voices begin to whisper our past, we need to cast down every imagination, every argument, and every mental stronghold, and every single high and lofty thing that's exalting itself. It's exalting itself like this above the Word of God and bring it down. We bring it down right now into subjection to the obedience of the mind of Christ. These thoughts right here that are just hovering. And here's the truth and here are the lies. And it's time to cast every single lie down and bring it under subjection to the obedience of the mind of Christ. And how are we going to be able to do that without the Word of God, which is Jesus Christ? He is the Word made flesh. You cannot separate Jesus from His Word. He is the Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory. According to Ephesians 1, 3-5, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will. So what does that mean? What does it mean? Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. So knowing who we are in Him is also knowing that He will not withhold any good thing from us. It's all spiritual blessings in Him that He gives to us. And we were chosen in Him before the creation of the world. It's just hard to grasp. It sounds so simple, but it's so deep at the same time. His ways are higher than our ways. And sometimes it's hard to grasp the simplicity of the truth of the gospel because we are in this human body. We are in this flesh. And it's hard to grasp spiritual principles while we're living in this flesh. And yes, we're going to make mistakes. Not one of us is perfect. No, not one of us. Not one. And that's why we need Jesus Christ, because we make mistakes. That's why we need a Savior. And if any man claimed to be perfect, there's a major problem there. And put on a church face and smile and try to be the best we can be. Our fruit is going to come out in situations. It's going to be known. And let us boast in the things of Christ even more. That when we are weak, it's then we are made strong in Him. And to just be bold about our faith. Because not one of us is perfect. And uh, it's time to just 
strip ourselves of the lie of the enemy that tells us to always just put on a smiley face like everything's okay and uh, hold everything in and that's what this world wants us to do but Jesus is there with open arms saying come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened down by life and I will give you rest and he is our provider and he is our deliverer and he is he is everything and without him we have nothing we have nothing I and mean, I'm not here to try to force people to believe a certain way these are my personal beliefs from my own personal relationship. So if somebody that watch, watches this video believes differently, I'm not here to tell you or force you or pressure you to believe the way that I believe. I just have a strong personal conviction to put these videos out as the Spirit leads and to leave the rest up to God because He is the Deliverer. He's the one that gives salvation and a lot of the times because we are in the flesh and we are merely men, we try to do so many different things not realizing that it's time to let God be true and every man a liar and the arm of flesh will fail us. Brothers and sisters in Christ shall fail us. People will disappoint us. So knowing this in advance, that this is all part of this walk, let us not get discouraged when these things happen or judge one another or be hypocritical or be gossiping about one another, but let us just love one another purely from a pure heart. And that's what it's really all about. That's what it's really all about here. According to Colossians 3, 3 through 4, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. We died, and our life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, you will also appear with Him in glory. So Christ is our life. Apart from Christ, there is no life. So if apart from Christ there is no life, then how can I find life unless I've lost it? He who finds life shall lose it, and he who loses his life for Jesus' sake shall find it. So what does that mean? I have to come to the end of myself and be dead to myself and my old ways and my old nature to come to the revelation of the fullness of what God has for me that according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All things are become new in Christ. And this is the good news. According to 1 John 3, 1 through 3. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet revealed, been revealed what we shall be. It has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. And everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. So there's a direct connection right there. As being a child of God, it's not been revealed what we shall be. But when He is revealed, we shall be like Him. We shall see Him as He is. And everyone with this hope purifies Himself just as He is pure. And as we become more purified as we go along, that's who we really are. We really are the new creation that Christ died for us to be changed into. We weren't born as a new creation. We, not, we must be born again. That's why we must be born again into a new creation in Christ. If we were just put here to just be born and then that was the end of all things and the end of the matter, there would be no glory in it for God if man could do it on his own. And God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And it's just amazing. According to Galatians 3.26, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. 
through faith, we are all sons of God in Christ Jesus. So apart from Christ Jesus, we're not sons of God. I know this is a harsh word, but I'm speaking the truth in love. I believe this with all of my heart, and I'm not here to pressure or force anyone to believe what I'm speaking. I'm just speaking it as I've been commanded to, and the rest is up to God. But Jesus Christ is the end of the matter of all things. Our faith shall take us through. According to Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, you were taught with regard to your former way of life. To put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So we were taught to put off our old self, because that's not who we really are. That lying serpent must be put to silence. Every accusing voice must be silenced now in the name of Jesus. It's not of God. Every voice of accusation speaking against our past and the things that we've done. Today is a new day. This is the day the Lord hath made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. His mercy is new every morning and that is the truth. And everything else is a lie. And we command that every lie be shifted now and completely exposed by the light of Jesus Christ. For myself, and everyone watching this video in Jesus mighty name we thank you Lord for the presence of God here tonight we thank you for your spirit Lord we worship and God is so good and he's just here to bless he's here to encourage he's here to motivate he's here to stir us up he's here to give us the urgency that he is coming soon and to get ready and it's time it's time to live in the fullness of what he died for us to be. He created in us a new man likened unto himself in the image of Christ. Hope of glory. So let us put our faith in Jesus Christ and not in our own self. Not in our own righteousness. Not in our own works. But it's by the righteousness of Christ that we place our faith and our belief in Jesus Christ and what he has done for us and that's the way that he has made access access into the holy of holies the holiest of holies he's made us to become his temple temple of the holy ghost and can a can a river spit forth bitter water and sweet at the same time sour and pure can light have fellowship with darkness can two walk together except they be agreed? So the old is done away with and the new has come. We are, un are under a new covenant of grace and it's to strengthen us. Grace is given by God to empower us. Grace is given by God to motivate and encourage us to overcome because He is the one that overcomes, the one that overcame the world and in Him we can overcome as well. We are made overcomers and we are more than conquerors through Him who loves us and it's not in ourselves. We can try to be the best we can be, but we're still going to mess up. We're still going to make mistakes. And that's why we must place our faith fully in Christ and receive the grace that's been extended to us this day and the mercy of God and receive the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and walk in the true identity of who we really are. But it takes a process of renewal of our mindset and an opening of our hearts to really grasp this and to grasp the entire identity of who Christ even is in accordance with his word. He sent his word and healed all that were sick and all manner of diseases. And faith always comes by hearing and hearing always comes by the word of God. And without the word of God, we're without 
a light on. We're walking in darkness. We are without a filter. We can't filter any of the thoughts that are running through our mind on a continual basis by anything. So we just received them all when we didn't have the word. We just received everything and took it as it came and just took it all in. Some of us, I don't know about you, but I know I did. And I just received every single thought. The negative thoughts I received and the positive thoughts I received. But now with this new life in Christ, it's taught me that that I have authority in the name of Jesus to command every negative thought that doesn't line up with this word to go. And I didn't know that before. Nobody had ever came to me and told me that I have authority over these things. That the devil had lied to me. That the devil had robbed, tried to steal, kill and destroy me. And we just command right now that this year, everything that the locust has stolen from us shall be... Um, Given back multiplied blessings we shall have, heaping and running over, till it overflows. The floodgates of heaven are open to us this year, and multiplied blessings are coming as we walk with Christ. It's the only way. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's the only way. According to Acts 4.12, there is no other name given among men whereas we must be saved. And the only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus came by the way of truth and grace. He came out of the mouth of God, is Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, hope of glory full of grace and truth. So let us receive the truth because everyone of the truth hears his voice. So I pray that we all hear his voice. I pray to hear his voice more this year than I heard him last year. I pray that more souls get saved this year than any other year. I pray for good things. I pray that the demonic oppressions of the enemy be exposed and uh, broken, the chains of sin, uh, the sin which so easily besets us, shall be broken this year by the mighty blood of Jesus Christ. And uh, let us just continue striving together for the spreading forth of God's word and encouraging one another to get back up. If we've fallen, just get back up. The righteous may fall five times, ten times, a thousand times, five thousand times but we get back up and it's through our faith and knowing who we are I see who you say I am God right here but these mental strongholds are coming in by the enemy which is not in agreement with what this says right here that you created mankind in your own image, the image of God you created us. That you knew me before you formed me in the womb. You set me apart. So every time we get a thought that's in, not in alignment, that's in disagreement with what God says about us, the only way to be able to cast that thought down and bring it under subjection to the obedience of the mind of Christ is to know what the Word says. It's vitally important. It's vitally important to know what this word says. God is who he says he is. He can do what he says he can do. And we are who he says we are. So why should we believe anything less? It's time. It's time. So uh, feel free. And we're going to just pray. And I hope that you'll join me if you feel left. Thank you so much again for joining me. I don't want to leave. I just want to stay on here as long as I can because it's amazing. It's awesome and it's a great outlet to just overflow from the inside out what's going on inside. It has to come out. It has to go somewhere. I cannot contain it to myself. It would 
it feels like a sin to do so. So feel free to pray with me. And I pray that the joy of the Lord is your strength and that you gain something from this because I definitely do every time. And you are my encouragement as well and my motivation. It keeps me going. I thank you all so much. And I'm really blessed by having you all with me in the name of the Lord. Um, so let us pray. Feel free. We thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world to save sinners. And anyone that doesn't know Christ, just feel free to pray this with me right now. Say, Lord, I don't know you as my Lord right now, but I want to. I admit that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. Right now, Jesus, I believe you are Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. I make you Lord, my Lord. You already are Lord. I make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Strengthen me. Pour out godly sorrow and the goodness of God upon me, which leads to repentance. Wash me by your blood. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with fire and power from the heavens. I believe that you died, Jesus, that you were buried, and that you rose the third day. Transform me. Make me born again into a new creation in Christ. Lead me to safety. Lead me to where you desire for me to be. In Jesus' mighty name, I receive your forgiveness. I break the power of all darkness off my life now by the blood of Jesus Christ. Allow my family and friends to come to you Lord save us strengthen our faith reveal yourself to us in a powerful way I invite you into my life I receive your grace free flowing from the throne room of God and right now I give you all of the praise all of the honor and all of the glory that is due for you alone are worthy to be praised thank you for your sacrifice I receive it and I believe these words in Jesus name I pray and also Father God put a strong desire and passion and hunger in me for your word give me a new revelation of your word Put it deep within me and strengthen my relationship with you overall. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Lord uniting us all for His glory. So let us just continue and just motivate each other and it's time. I thank all of you for being here with me and until the next time. I will pray for all of you and I hope all of you will please pray for me and let us just continue marching as an army of the Lord, servants of the Lord, soldiers for Christ. Be blessed until the next time. God bless. Amen.